ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له انا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له انا اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساعدون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور مختصاتها وكل مختصه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد my brother and sister in islam <coughs> As we're going through, or the Ummah is going through difficult time, as we see the distress all around, whether we turn on the news, whether we look at each other, we have this question that we are asking ourselves. Why this suffering? Why the torture that's been subjected and the Muslim children, the, the, uh, even the newborn, and all kind of people, throughout the world wherever this we see that muslims are being subjected to some kind of negative propaganda or something that is uh, affecting the lives of the muslims and when we reflect and especially from the from the younger generation <clears throat> they ask the question why we are in this situation so when we look and we reflect from the lives of our Anbiya alayhi salam. Not only our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but all the Nabiyyun that came, came before our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked to test his beloved people. The ones he has blessed with the gift of Iman, as he has blessed his Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the difficult time comes only for, not for the ones who are suffering, and through that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises their, their ranks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them opportunity. If we look at the history, the mothers and the parents, right from the beginning of this ummah, the Muslimun, not even the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the prophets who came or the Muslims who were before us, they were always prepared prepared to sacrifice themselves and whoever or whatever it took to nurture the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine when our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we read the seerah, and he was watching the people who were new Muslim as, the, as this ummah was in taking shape, taking form, the very early Muslims and when they were subjected to torture. There was a specific, a specific area in Mecca where they used to take them and they used to torture them. And our Prophet Sallallahu walking by there, he used to listen to the cries of Habba And the others who were tortured and subjected to all kind of torment during that time, but not being in the situation and did not have permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the arms or defend or fight in any way, shape or form. Can we imagine what was and how was the, what was the situation of the heart of our blessed, blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When he heard the cries of those people who were just subjected to something just by saying, la ilaha illallah, and believing in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were accused. They were accused 
of changing something or bringing something new. And if when we look back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about the story of Musa alayhi salam. And he tells us, when he went to Fir'aun, the one who was killing all of the, of the kids, of the children, he was the killer of the children. And when Musa alayhi salam went to him, he told his people, when he was doing the mashawa, when he was doing consultation with them, he was doing consultation with them, how should we get rid of Musa alayhi salam? And he was suggesting that his intention here is to take over your land. He wants to expel you from very land that you are here. His intention is not good. Even though Musa alayhi salam lived in his household, as a child he was raised in that very household of Fir'aun. But he was accusing him. He was making him the one who was the bad guy. The one who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a mission. And his only one mission was the people he was torturing to take them out of the bondage, out of that slavery, out of that torture that he was subjected to them. And he was keeping their women alive and killing the kids, the, the children, and he was taking out the, the males. But when he heard the message of Musa alayhi salam, what he is saying, calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we see the interpretation, it's almost like he called him, you know, the, the, the terrorist, that he's the one, he's the one who is taking, you know, here with bad intentions. He's going to take over, he's going to expel you from your land, and he's going to be what you don't him, want him to be. So this is throughout the history. When our Prophet was asked, when some people, because of the torture they were subjected to in the early days of Islam. They asked our Prophet ﷺ, how long? When will this end? And our Prophet ﷺ was sitting in power. And his face went red. And he reminded them, he said, the people who were before you, they were subjected, they were, they were put, their heads were split into two, just for saying, la ilaha illallah. And they were thrown in the ditches. And they were thrown in the ditches where they were subjected to fire and all kind of torture just to take them away from saying la ilaha illallah and believing in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at the history from the seerah of our Prophet when these tests came, when they did tests come and we see them, because we live Otherwise, in a state of ignorance, where we are ignoring what is going on, not among ourselves, not what is going on in the Ummah. We are just too busy with our lives so much. And it is the truth for each and every one of us that in this life, in this dunya, for the worldly matters, we are just so busy with everything else. And then we are so divided that we don't think one cause is our cause. When we look at the, at the seed of our Prophet at that time, the Sahaba who came from totally not believing and they came in the realm of, of being Muslims. So as their commitment was before to their non-religion that was before that, the time of Jahiliyyah, but once they enter in Islam, their commitment was one. And that commitment was to raise the flag of Islam. Take it everywhere. No matter what it takes, no matter what kind of sacrifice it takes, no matter how much we have to suffer for that, the cause was one. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, belief in one and believing in that prophet and loving that prophet and taking that love not only to their hearts but throughout the ummah. Wherever they go, and they had this goal to spread that throughout the world. They didn't care about the worldly things. They didn't care about the, 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 uh, what they will lose in their world, their businesses, their whatever they had in their life, their possessions. When they migrated, 
We know the lives of people who were very wealthy in Makkah. And they had to leave everything behind, every, every single penny, as we say, or whatever was in their possession. And as they were leaving, they were asking them, you earned everything from here. What are you taking with you? But they sacrificed everything because they had a bigger goal in their, in their mind. They knew that the provider, the one we believe in, he's the one who's going to take care of us. These worldly possessions, they come and go. And the one who promised it, no matter where we are, they're going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. So they had one goal in mind, one united, one Ummah, one Muslim. Regardless of which tribe they came from, regardless of where they belong to, regardless of what they were thinking before, their tribal affiliations and everything, because they had this lineage that they were very proud of. And they used to boast about that. But after becoming Muslim, they had only one goal in mind. Taking the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sticking to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sticking to the teachings of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they changed the whole world. And they got into such a situation that the whole world, and they gained Isa in the entire world. Those very Arabs, that were called unlettered people. <coughs> when they were going out to the, to the battle to the Romans, and they were going to the battle to the Zoroastrians, the one who were Persians at the time, the superpowers of that time, they had no respect for them. They said they're coming from Hijaz, what they know about fighting and everything. But they showed them. Why? They were not larger in numbers, but their commitment was one. Their goal was one. Their goal was to take the Izzah and the love of that Prophet وسلم, who sent them on that mission, take it to another level. Take it in such, such a way that the whole world will recognize that this new religion that they are not willing to recognize or willing to kind of shove away that these people will go away in time. They made it such that it became a superpower. They ruled the entire world. They had no gain in mind. They were not looking for lands. They conquered the palaces. They conquered everything in the world, the palaces of Kisra, and all the, all the possessions he had, but didn't care for that. Their commitment was only one. Living in that, those palaces, their commitment was only one, being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being Muslim. So if when we look at our lives in the current situation, myself looking at that, can we say that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us, brings about these tests around us, where we see this, that we are weak. Only the power is with him. He gives Izza to whoever he wants. And the only people he promised Izza to, the one who are obedient to him, the one who are Muslim to him, the one who are submissive to him, the one who have one goal to take this religion and stick to it and become one ummah, become one nation, become one people and have only one commitment in their heart. I was asked the other day by a non-Muslim, how many people do you think are Muslim in this world? When I said maybe, they say billion, 1.2 billion. He said 2 billion. This is what I heard. 2 billion. And what's going on? Where are those 2 billion people? Do we have answer to that? So we think about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings those kind of tests around us so that we open our eyes and we assess ourselves where we are, where we are lacking. We cannot just blame the others and say it is this one's fault or that one's fault. If we are two billion, or if we, even if we are more than a billion, that's a very large number. So if we were one ummah, and we were united, and we had only one cause, to be, take the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and raise that flag, and be the ummati of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and stick to that, 
is that comes from him. So maybe this is a time for us to reflect also. Not only to see and feel bad. We should feel bad. We should have, our hearts should tremble. But we should also learn from that to bear our weakness in us. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our ummah. We ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give izzah to Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslim children, young, old, no matter where they are. No matter where they are in the world, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them in such a way. And the ones who are fighting, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them himna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them all the higher ranks that are promised to the ones who are martyred. And the ones who are suffering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them in this dunya and raise their ranks in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children, our brothers and sisters who are suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their ranks in such a way that he has promised the one who, who tastes this uh, taste of shahada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the rest of the nation. Allahumma arizza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma arizza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma arizza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وتوب علينا على وتوب علينا الله ما ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة ثم في الآخرة حسنة ثم وقتنا ذاب النار ربنا لا تجعل قلوبنا بعد إذ خديتنا ما خدنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الرحيم رب الحمد ما ما رب يعني سعيد إبعد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يحيكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله رسوله ورسوله الله تعالى أكبر أكيد الصلاة لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها 
laha ma kasabat wa alaiha ma kasabat Rabbana la tu'ahizna in nasina au akta'na Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isuran kama hamautahu al Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Can you please clear the space? Come in. Clear the space. I'll let you send a room along with the other people. 